<laughs> All right, guys, we're back. We brought Seb from Ari. How do you get to where you are? Well, it's starting a long time ago. You know, uh, when I when I started playing video game was in I think it was in 1992. If I don't make any mistake, I was mm. like the first time that I discovered a video game was with uh, Sonic. That when I turned off the console and I saw the screen appearing with Sega and so on. I was like, wow, that's the thing that I want to do later. <laughs> and I stick to that idea, and now we're there. What steps did you have to take in order for you to even create your own company? Oh, in Belgium, it's quite complicated, but actually, I'm not, I'm not from Belgium, I'm French. Oh. And I was, walk, I was uh, traveling around in Europe. Yeah, I ended up by uh, settling in Belgium and making my own company in Belgium. Because Belgium is a very small country, uh, I think like the amount of people that you have in Belgium is a regular city that you have in US probably uh, and there is not a lot of uh, video game studio mm. so instead of like applying to a video game studio I made my own because it, it was easier actually. Did you have experience starting up anything like that before? Uh, starting a company yeah I had experience on that I did companies uh, in, uh, in other countries um, Video games, I had experience as well, but I was doing at the beginning web games, uh, and afterwards I was making mobile games. Uh, but Ari is the first console game that we do. So why Ari? What was the inspiration behind even starting a game like that? It was a mix of a lot of different things. Uh, first was that when I was little, I was also uh, playing a lot with uh, those kind of programs. I think, I don't know if you know them, like RPG Maker. I was playing with that and at that time I did a very little game. Uh, I, was, I couldn't even call that a game, it would be lying actually. Mm. But it was something where you had to change the seasons to go from one zone to another. Uh, and that idea is sticking in the back of my mind for a long time. And when, I'm, when I finished my last uh, mobile game, I was like, okay, I'm, I would like to do something more than just mobile games. I didn't like the mobile game industry. Mm. And I ended up like doing a console game. I wanted to have something new, something fresh that was hasn't been done before. But at the same time, keeping the vibe of old games. So I ended up by doing Ari. All right, and Ari's platform adventure, yeah. uh, puzzle solving game. Indeed. So what's what's the um, what's the big difference between mobile and console in your opinion? Uh, in in mobile, you are not actually anymore uh, making games. In mobile, so really? you're looking at the statistics, you are looking at when people are uh, dropping out the, the games mm -hmm. uh, and then you change accordingly and you're not making a game anymore, you are just making a product that will sell. It's not something that I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to tell a story, I wanted to be able to have a, an adventure that you can follow and it can appreciate. Why uh, reach out to a publisher? Um, why not just self-develop? Well, in Belgium it's kind of it's kind of complicated to just like go by yourself and uh, and make uh, make some game like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and also having a publisher, it's like a good way also to have marketing uh, and to have something like a wider audience that I will not be able to do by myself. I mean, I have like so many things to do by myself that mm -hmm. having somebody that would take care of like organizing something at E3, I'm really happy that I'm not managing that. Well, <laughs> how, how large is your team again? Oh, our team is pretty small, actually. So can you tell me more about the hiring process? Like, what do you look for when you get your employees? Uh, we have a very special way of uh, hiring people in, uh, in our team. Uh, one thing that I value the most is like giving the chance to people. Mm. And when we hire people, we actually take them first as an intern. Uh, we train them as much as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if they, if they are worth it, we actually keep them and uh, offer them a job. Gotcha. So, so uh, you have uh, newcomers like right out of uh, school or something? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. And usually that, the fact that we train them for a few months, actually they are actually fitting exactly what we want. Nice, awesome. So, and it's also like for them, especially with a game like Ari that have some potential, uh, it's it's a nice for them to enter into an indie company, mm -hmm. have a game that have potential uh, to put them on a portfolio, and then uh, afterwards hiring them and being able to to keep them as long as we can. Uh, what are all their positions? The thing is that the positions that we have are kind of like flexible. Mm -hmm. So the, the two animator, one is like uh, specialized into animating, but also rigging. He's also helping helping us in level design mm -hmm. and uh, guiding the other people. Um, making better levels and so on. Uh, the other animator, 
Camille. She's actually also doing all the um, the storyboarding. She's helping in the scenario as well. Uh, she's making all the drawings that we have. Uh, then we have Quambo, mm -hmm. and he's making the character design, and he's also currently helping into the. Um, the environmental art also. We have Wolf that is uh, making all the AI in the game. He's also programming and he's also helping me managing the company. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Alex and she's one of the developer. That's one of the of the developer that we she didn't have any training when she started with us. Mm -hmm. And we, we gave her a chance and she completely opened like a floor. She killed it. And, yeah, and she killed it. So nice, nice. It's, it's Sounds really, like a pretty diverse team. Yeah, yeah, we have a very diverse team. Oh. Uh, it's like in our team, I think like everybody is coming from a different country or different uh, or different uh, environment. You know, uh, we have different language at the office, and even though we are in Belgium and the official language is French and Dutch, mm. we end up by speaking English at the office because we have too many people that don't speak the same language. That's also what I wanted to have. I don't want it to have a French team in a French country doing French stuff. Can you tell me some of the challenges that you face with uh, game development? Well, it's, it has different, uh, different challenge. The, the first big challenge that we had was actually to find uh, a publisher and to find uh, a way to finance the project. Once that one was finished, we had another challenge on like completing milestone and being on time also. Uh, and it go on and on like that. It's mini challenge all the time, all the way. I mean, I can imagine that that's going to be kind of rough for you, you know, like constantly having negative parts. How do you how do you offset all the negative, um, I guess, feelings that you get? Video game for me, it's like running a marathon. It's you have to go for a long time, and you you cannot stop. If, mm. And if you start too fast, and if you if you run, uh, you you will be the burnout. Yeah, the burnout's real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you have to know where you go, and you have to know what you do. Uh, it's also one of the big uh, big challenge. Uh, how do you uh, inspire your team to also take the same exact route that you do? It's trying to give them as much freedom as they can, uh, as I can. Mm -hmm. Like. Whenever, whenever I give them instruction, I, I cannot let them free to, to take one or two direction, uh, but still at the same time, um, making sure that they are going in the, all the same direction, because otherwise you go in all direction and you don't do anything anymore. And if you had to give a piece of advice to any aspiring indie artists out there, any game devs, what would you give them? Everybody have is like, have a spot in there. Uh, yeah, you just have to, uh, to stay focused and continue on to what you're doing. Thanks again for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time.